Next we come to the fluid pressure. It's very important to understand this concept because we have a few questions and this question you don't have to mug up. You have to just understand and you will be able to answer them if you know the concepts. We need to understand a few terms. We have to understand what is osmotic pressure and we have to understand what is hydrostatic pressure. First we will be talking about osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is the pressure exerted by the chemical composition of the fluid. Now again it is of two types. One is the crystalloid and the second is the colloidal. So what happens if we take fluid. Fluid has some molecules that are crystalloid molecules such as sugars and magnesium, fluoride, all those things. Then we have some substances, some protein molecules in that. So these composition, we'll, we'll just before going into this, we'll just see a small experimentation. If you have a container which is separated by a semi-permeable membrane. When we say semi-permeable membrane, that allows the transport of the solvent but does not allow the transport of the solute. So what we have on one side, we have plain water and the other side, we have water with a lot of solute. You can say it's a sugar solution. So if we have a sugar solution on this side and water on this side in a semi-permeable membrane here, what do we expect? What do you expect? Will sugar move from here to here or will water move from here to here? What do you say? Since the membrane is semi-permeable, it is not the sugar that can go from this way to this way because this membrane will not allow, but the water has to come to the balance. So the water will be flowing towards this side and this capacity of this sugar solution to pull the water towards it is called as its osmotic pressure. So the property of osmotic pressure, what we have to understand that it has capacity to pull the solvent. With this basic thing, we will uh, we'll just go towards the composition of any fluid, especially the fluid inside the body. Inside the body, the main fluid which we will be talking about is blood. Blood will have some solute. We were talking about solute here as sugar. Here we will be talking about solute as sodium, magnesium, chloride, proteins and all that. When we talk about crystalloids, which is mostly the electrolytes, sodium, chloride, etc., they exert some amount of this kind of pressure that is osmotic pressure. This osmotic pressure which is exerted by crystalloids is called as crystalloid osmotic pressure. While the protein, protein do exert some osmotic pressure which is called as colloidal osmotic pressure or oncotic pressure. Now very important property of protein is protein they exert a very high osmotic pressure but crystalloids they have a negligible kind of osmotic pressure. So it is, you know, many a times the term osmotic pressure is used interchangeably with oncotic pressure just because the crystalloid osmotic pressure is negligible as compared to that exerted by protein. The point what you have to remember is osmotic pressure, the pressure exerted by a solute inside the solvent will try to pull the fluid in. So what it is doing is, it is just trying to pull the solvent so this is a typical property of osmotic pressure. With this basic we go ahead here. Then we have one more pressure that is hydrostatic pressure. What is hydrostatic pressure? Hydrostatic pressure is the pressure exerted by contained fluid. So if you take in any compressible vessel, I will not talk about some hard vessel, compressible, something like blood vessels. In blood vessels you have fluid. Mostly this fluid is blood. Because of the presence of blood, it exerts some pressure on the walls. And this pressure is called as hydrostatic pressure. A typical property of this pressure is it will try to drive out the fluid out of the vessels. When it drives out the fluid, again this vessel wall is a semi-permeable. Since it is semi-permeable, it will not allow you know the cells or the other components such as the proteins or crystalloids to go through it but yes it will definitely allow the solvent that is mostly the water here to pass through it. So hydrostatic pressure 
drives the fluid out. We had already seen the osmotic pressure which is provided by the proteins and the crystalloid. They try to drive the solvent in. They pull the water inside. So now we know the two pressures. One is the hydrostatic and one is the osmotic which is used interchangeably with oncotic pressure. So these are the two pressure and the balance of this decides the presence or the absence of Eden. Now we have some points here. We have the capillary blood pressure. The capillary blood pressure is little higher side. It is 32 mmHg while at the venous end it is low. Now uh, can you just uh, feel the significance of this part? Veins are supposed to collect. So they have a low hydrostatic pressure so they will allow the flow of fluid inwards. While the arteries they have a higher hydrostatic pressure which will allow the flow of the fluid outwards. Now we have tissue tension. What is tissue tension? We have been talking about the hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure. So hydro uh, hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure are provided by the blood which is inside the vessel. But if you draw something which is outside the vessel, outside the vessel what you have? You have the cells. And other than that you have interstitial fluid. Now this interstitial fluid, since it is a fluid, it also has some components. It also has some components or solutes. But interstitial fluid has mostly the crystalloid. It doesn't have much of proteins. Proteins are mostly present inside the vessel. But they do have crystalloid and these crystalloid tend to pull some more solvent by their tissue tension. Tissue tension or Osmotic pressure, osmotic tissue pressure you can call it. So this tissue tension is 4 mmHg. With this basic we go ahead here. The rule is the osmotic pressure pulls in and hydrostatic pressure drives out. With this rule what we do? We apply this rule into the vessels. In the vessels the capillary and we saw that the hydrostatic pressure was 32. Right? Here in what happens is this hydrostatic pressure drives it out. But we have some osmotic pressure that pulls it in. But hydrostatic pressure is more. Because of which the fluid tends to go outwards. But at the venous end the, the hydrostatic pressure drops down. The oncotic pressure at the capillary end and the venous end will approximately remain same because the composition of the blood doesn't change. It's not that the solute that flows out and in, it's just the water base that goes out and in. So you can say the protein component and the crystalloids, they all remain same. So that is why the oncotic pressure remains the same. So when we apply the same oncotic pressure or osmotic pressure here, it will be 25. But 32 is more than 25. So outcome will be outward flow but here at this point 12 is less than 25 the 25 is the driving in fluid and 12 hydrostatic pressure is driving out fluid so ultimate outcome is inflow so you can say at the capillary end the water or the solvent it tends to go out but does that cause edema in a normal human being no we don't see edema at every capillary areas. Why? Because we have something else to balance this. We have this lymphatic flow. This lymphatic flow will take care of whatever excess fluid comes out of the vessel and it will just take it out there. So we don't have edema in a normal working capillary areas.